So Barbados has a long history of Muslims' uh, presence in, in, in Barbados. So we have, uh, at this point, about 3,000 Muslims on the island. There were the presence of Africans and Muslims before the Europeans came in 1492. Wow. But our, our recent history, as I mentioned, the East Indians who came from, from India and settled here, they were very strong on their faith, especially the Gujaratis, and they built the masajids and they built the madrasas and they established businesses. And today we, we benefit from that foundation that they created. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to beautiful Barbados. My name is Jabir Ahmed and I make travel videos from around the world. Today I'm going to be taking you around Barbados, parts of Barbados, and showing you some sites of Islamic history. There are certain things here that actually date back maybe over a hundred years, which is quite interesting when you think about Barbados, which is which isn't usually in the spotlight uh, when it comes to Islamic history. So I'm going to get into my car and we're going to head down into town and uh, maybe explore parts of uh, Barbados along the way as well so I can show you some of the roads uh, but yeah let's get straight into town and explore all right so we're currently on Sobers Lane which played a huge part in the history of Muslims here in Barbados this was actually one of the first streets used to develop a masjid and as you can see right here behind me we have the Medina Masjid and the Medina Masjid was actually a, a kind of, you could say one of the first masjids here. There was another masjid here before this, which we're going to travel to in a little while. Uh, but this masjid here was uh, quite historic uh, in the sense that it was actually declared, if you can see over there, just about make out, over the Barbados National Trust, it was declared a building of historic interest. And the person who was in charge of kind of like constructing it and things like that, his name was Muhammad Digi. I think that's how I'm, pronounced, I'm pronouncing it right. So basically he was, uh, he came from Gujarat and he was a trader and he basically was involved heavily in opening businesses and things like that here but he was also very much invested and interested in the religious side of things and uh, establishing mosques and establishing uh, um, you know like educational uh, services for children that would um, you know for the future generation so he opened this mosque here and there was someone from Trinidad, I think his name was S.M. Jalil, he came from Trinidad to do the official opening. You can see here, the actual the limestone uh, is used from quarries um, in parts of Barbados. So it's retained most of the structure that you can, the, the structure that you see here is actually from maybe the 50s or the 60s. So it's a, a pretty impressive mosque as you can see and it has a very impressive uh, entrance and uh, this mosque actually stretches back for a little while there's a uh, wudu facilities and everything inside you can see, you can see it has a very kind of a west indian influence because in west india they had hoods over the windows like this and actually the bricks here are made of hand hewn coral stones i think it is and not limestone i could be wrong it fits right in with 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 in in the street and it's quite a nice sight to see when you're driving past when you're driving past when you're driving through so Brisbane, as you can see the very bajan houses these are all called chattel houses i think it is these are very olden style bajan houses so we're gonna stop here for a little while have a look at the masjid and head over to the next place which well, when we get there, I can show you what it is. All right, so our second stop is a street called Pinfold Street. And the reason why we're here is because just recently they painted and designed this amazing mural. A few artists headed by someone called Rashid, I think Bodu, his name is Bodu. He recently has maybe December 2022, I think it was, they designed this amazing mural, as you can see. And the, the cool thing about this mural is that it was completely free for the team that proposed it and as you can see it displays really really powerfully the history of like Indo, the Indo-Barbadian culture really like the Indians that arrived here from East India and then you've also got like signs and these were actual names of shops I believe and businesses Surti United was a very old one uh, and then you have like S.Y. Adam and Son which is still around till this day and then you've got some amazing stuff here like the infusion of the Indian flag with the Barbados flag and then you've got some like snacks that became a part of Barbadian culture 
like the roti and the samosas and stuff like that and a few other sweet treats and you can see here the name Rashid I think he's Bondu, Baudu so forgive me for pronouncing the name wrong Neville Le Legal Fancy de Olivier Greenage Glen Coy these were the artists I believe that designed this amazing mural you can see the shop over here called Pro Sales that's another Muslim business here so you can see this chair here this chair is a special gift from the Indian government to the Barbados government uh, in 1966 as a gift of independence so that kind of you can see all this here is a part of Indo-Barbadian culture and to signify and symbolize the contribution that Indians made to the culture here the heritage here so it's quite fascinating how much uh, um, kind of Indian culture is becoming a part of Barbadian culture so it's really really powerful how much they contributed and how their legacy is going to be sticking around for quite a while with that mural so anyways we're gonna head on get back into our car and head over to our next spot so we're currently on Swan Street and this was actually one of the first places that Muslims came to when they first came to Barbados and actually a lot of the first Muslims that arrived here well a few of the first Muslims that arrived here they were Bengalis so a lot of the Gujarais when they came in the 1920s and 30s they actually set up their uh, businesses on this road and there were quite a few old Gujarati businesses on this road I'm not sure if uh, any more exist there are quite a few businesses that are headed up by Gujaratis to this day but um, not from the previous day one famous one was Surti United which I think was owned by Muhammad Digia but I think once you get here as well you can see called this road just ahead of me this one here is called Milk Market Road so Milk Market Road as you can see here was actually home to quite a few Muslims as well so it was quite a, a bustling area this year there wasn't a lot of Muslims at that time but it was home this area you could say was home to um, the first the first group cohort of Muslims that arrived here from India and they set up their businesses here they lived here on top of these buildings and you may have seen some East Indian names here Gujarati names Bengali names things like that so it's quite fascinating when you look at the place today knowing kind of transports you back in time and reminding you of the fact that this entire area was actually home to quite a lot of Indian businesses but it still is home to Indian businesses and there are a lot of Indians here today about maybe like 3,000 however obviously a lot of the old businesses that were open back then are not open today you can see this business here called SY Adam and Son that was actually a business that was open back in the days maybe I don't know maybe 30 40 50 years ago or something but it's still here today all over Barbados all right so I just popped into one of the shops there and I didn't just didn't want to point a camera at their faces but there's actually a Palestinian business here called Paradise and um, they've been here for about 25 years but apparently Syrians were here in this part they lived here they were kind they were here around the same time as the Indians maybe 30s or 40s give or take 10 I don't know five ten years but they came up some the businesses and an interesting story I'll tell you is that um, the Bengalis came here around 1910 I think it was and when the Gujaratis came a few years after maybe 10 20 years after they saw chickens tied to the bed of the Bengali like in the Bengali houses there were beds and there's chickens tied to them and they kind of the Gujaratis looked at this and thought oh right okay these Bengalis must be doing well because chicken was like kind of a delicacy it's a luxury item to eat not everybody could afford chicken in India so then what they did is they set up businesses here and they settled down so that they could also enjoy the luxury so they chose a really good spot so then in the 1960s someone called Maulana Yusuf Piprawala who lives near Jama Masjid on I think New Kensington Road or Kensington Road he actually came here in the 60s and since then Alhamdulillah you know a lot of Muslims you'll see them walking around with skull cut with hats on you'll see them walking around with jubbas on uh, there's a masajid here because of his work he's about 102 years old now and uh, he lives around there you can go and visit him as well so it's amazing to think how far the history stretches back here and how much work has been done to establish deen here and make like Islam a lifestyle within kind of like like the businesses and things like that to recognize the importance of uh, you know kind of like 
practicing Islam at the same time as going about your businesses. So we're heading off to our next uh, stop. So we are here on um, very sacred ground really. Um, this is in Newton, the enslaved burial ground at Newton and the plantation is called Newton and this burial ground here that you see behind you is where it's estimated that 570 of uh, persons of, who were enslaved in Africa and brought to Barbados are buried. Uh, this is a unique site because there's none like it in, the hes in this hemisphere. Uh, a, a site as a cemetery that has maintained um, since uh, the time of slavery uh, in, in this manner. And for us as Muslims, we recognize that there have been Muslims among the enslaved people that came to Barbados. And it is quite likely that some Muslims are also buried here. But we know that there were Hufas that came. We know that there were scholars of Islam that came. We know that there were people educated in the faith that came, that not came, but that were brought or kidnapped and brought on ships. And these were all from West Africa? All from West Africa. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that is in the history and brought to the Americas. So we believe that within Barbados as well, there were Muslims among the enslaved. And there is some evidence that is coming and uh, hopefully we'll visit Carterington College. That's one of the plantations where they have been documented that among the enslaved brought to Carterington Plantation were persons with the name like Fatima and Ahmad and so on. Wow. So these are Muslim names. So this isn't exactly part of the Islamic kind of history trail here in Barbados, but it's really interesting to show that just uh, behind me here, we have the original entrance for a synagogue that dates back to the 17th century, I think 1600s, mid 1600s. And it's crazy that, um, you know, the building that you see here is actually, it says it here, this brickway archway was the original pedestrian entrance to the Nidhe Israel Synagogue, which was constructed in 1654. So this all goes back to the mid 17th century. And it says here, 2009 and 17th century ritual bath was uncovered near the synagogue nearby the Nidhe Israel Museum was developed within a former 18th century warehouse. So it's crazy to think that this is actually the oldest synagogue in in the Western Hemisphere. It is the oldest synagogue in the Western Hemisphere and it dates back to the mid 17, 1600s. So imagine Jews were actually here in Barbados and I think a lot of them were kind of like maybe owners of, um, I mean kind of like headed the slave trade and things like that. So it's quite interesting to learn that Jews had made the way all the way to the Caribbean uh, as far back as the 1600s. You can see the amount of graves here, Jewish graves, which shows that there were a lot of Jewish people here as far back as the 1600s. So I'm currently in the center of Bridgetown and as you can see here with all the yachts in front, this was a place where just outside the Granville Williams bus terminal, this was a place where a lot of the ships came and docked when they came from places like Kolkata, places in India, from around the world when Gujaratis and Bengalis came, they came. This was the first place, it's kind of like the history of East Indians initiated right here in this place where the ships came and docked from various places from around the world, carrying Indians and their belongings, all sorts of stuff. And actually, one of the Indians that came to this place, he actually brought with him, it was actually brought over to Guyana first, but um, a Quran actually made its way to Barbados. And I'm assuming that the Quran actually was on a boat that came and docked right here. Um, as you can see, the Quran is extremely old and it's uh, extremely huge in size. So it's amazing to think that back then people came here, people came with their belongings and people came with all sorts of like religious scriptures and things like that as well. So I'm heading over to another amazing spot and it's near the, I think this is the Independence Square, the Liberation Square. And right here is a very old fire station. And uh, this place is just super amazing. Came here at night time, so I couldn't record properly, but uh, let me just show you. It's quite spectacular to have something like this. So here we are. So here we have a wall, but this ain't just any regular wall. We have hear the names of all the people that contributed towards the legacy and the heritage and the history of Barbados and what's amazing is that as you look through these names all these names you'll actually find Muslim names here as well so I'll give you they all go in alphabetical order so I'll give you an example um, I don't know if you can see but for example you have Ismail and Isa over there and then so I was looking through this wall to find various names and I found even like, for example, if you go to this side here, it goes all the way around. 
you find Motala there, Mota there, Mansur there as well. It's crazy, like when you think about it, that there's all these Muslims that came here and contributed. There's there's a load of names. There's people from all over the world that their names are here, obviously. But um, it's just amazing to think that there were a lot of Muslims that also contributed. There's also one called, I think it's a Gujarati name from uh, called Piprawala or somewhere. Let me see if I can find that. So if you come here, it's quite interesting. You can just you take quite a bit of time, you know, standing around having a look for names. Let me go around to this side, see if anything comes up. And they've also got, you can see here, they've got some empty spaces as well for those people. If you come up with a name, then you can tell the government I think it is or someone and they can actually place the names here for you. So you have like, for example, look, Sacha. There's a huge Sacha family here in. You've got Shabazz here. You've got Yusuf over here. You've got Abbas over here. You've got Al Salam over here. So these are all the people that contributed, like the surnames of the people that contributed towards the history and heritage of Barbados. Uh, Abdul Mohaymin, Abdul Wadud over there as well, as you can see. So here we have Ahmed spelt with the A, and there was one spelt with the E as well, but I can't seem to find it. So you can see this amazing area here, this in, entire wall has names of people who contributed towards the history and heritage. You've got Abdul Hakim over there, Abidin over there. It's crazy, there's so many names. I mean, like if you come here, take a bit of time, walk around and you'll find quite a lot of names. And it's quite, it's pretty quiet here. It's a nice area to chill out and relax um, away from the beaches. The beach is just over there on that side. So yeah, definitely this is one of the best things I found here in Barbados. All right, so let's head over to our next stop. So this area over here is actually called Golden Square Freedom Park. A lot of people come here play games at night, chill out, have a munch, things like that. So it's quite a nice area to relax and it doesn't get too busy on the weekdays. So I avoid the weekends if I was you. I'm currently at Jama Masjid, which plays a huge part in the history, Islamic history of Barbados. This masjid here was actually opened in 1951 and it has a really interesting Islamic history. So basically with this place here, back in maybe the 30s and 40s, this street here where the Muslims lived. This is called Kensington New Road. I'll just quickly go and show you the area here. You can see there's a pharmacist, pharmacy next door. And uh, this is Kensington New Road. This entire road has a lot of Muslims. And this mosque here, we'll just walk around here. And this mosque here was actually um, founded in 1950s. But before that, before the foundation of this mosque, Muslims used to actually pray in each other's houses. Uh, they should just go to people's houses and just pray in there and so for that reason um, they started thinking of let's collect some money to build a mosque and things like that and so it's all mentioned in this book called Bengal to Barbados which has really helped me understand the Islamic history of Barbados a lot better here um, whilst here especially walking around and traveling around and reading this book so bringing to the history to life so then after that there was someone called Sayyid Piprawala he used to actually go to people's houses and collect the money for the building of the masjid. I'll quickly read out a part of the book that um, will help kind of uh, give you an idea of, uh, of the foundation of this mosque. It said Sayyid Piprawala and Mawlana Dawood Pandor spearheaded the building of the masjid at Kensington New Road, this one right here. And Muhammad Digia, who lived in Passage Road, I think that's not far from here, uh, he was really good at carpentry and tiling work and he designed the mimbar, which we'll go inside and I'll show you right now. But this is really interesting part. So there was someone called Akram Ali. So he was the nephew of one of the first person, first Bengali that came to uh, Barbados. He was the nephew of Bashar Ali Diwan. He was the first, one of the first Bengalis. I think the first Bengali that actually came to Barbados. And Akram Ali, who was the nephew of him, he was actually the first Muazzin um, and caretaker of the masjid. So the first Muazzin and the, the, the first azan by the first muazzin in Barbados was done by someone called Akramali who was also a Bengali. And it says the masjid was operated from donations and even the Imam and Akramali depended on the donations from the Gujarati Muslims here. Uh, the first Eid al-Fitr sermon was delivered by Maulana Adam who later migrated to Trinidad and the Eid prayer was led by Ismail Kotiwala. 
And then a madrasa was established here in 1952. But I think what's really important here is that this mosque here has really kind of made a massive difference in terms of the religious kind of upbringing of children here and the next generation. And further down from here, you have someone's house that I was telling you about before called Molana Yusuf Piprawala who actually is the person who made a massive difference in terms of bringing about Islam uh, kind of embedding within the culture, embedding within the lifestyle here the importance of Islam so it's, uh, it's amazing, it's amazing I'll quickly go inside and show you so this was the first masjid on the island of Barbados so let's see if we can head inside, Bismillah I think, oh, I think we might be unlucky Let's just probably close. I'll try from the side entrance and see if we can get inside. It is quite early. It's around 10 o'clock in the morning. So yeah, I think it's locked off. But um, I do have some pictures. Um, I'll put up a picture right now to give you an idea of uh, the masjid, what it looks like inside. So yeah, this is a immense history. This is a, almost like a, you could say like over a 72, 70 year old masjid here in Barbados. And um, you can see one of the best parts is that the architecture of the masjid is very very kind of like it reminds you of something that you'll, that you'll it reminds you of something that you'll find in India and it's taken up a huge amount of space here which is amazing so Barbados is very very accepting of different cultures and uh, you know uh, especially the Muslims that came from East India from Gujarat the lifestyle kind of worked together and you know Bajan people were influenced and quite a number of them became Muslim as well. So we're going to head off to our last spot, which is going to be the Westbury Cemetery. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about that place once we get there. Uh, again, I can't recommend this book enough. It's really helped. It's written very simply, uh, very tastefully as well about the history of um, Islam and Muslims and also like Sindhis and Indi and generally Hindus as well that came here not just about the Muslims it's just generally about the hundred year history of East Indians in Barbados so I definitely recommend you getting this it's on Amazon so let's head over to Westbury Cemetery all right so we've finally made it to Westbury Cemetery which is on the left hand side uh, we're going to try to find an entrance let's see if we can make our way in there somehow I'm currently standing in the Westbury Cemetery in the Muslim part of the cemetery and as you can see behind me all these green bars kind of along this side and on this side as well they are all marking the graves of many of the Muslims that lived here in Barbados and passed away here many of these are recent graves uh, first Muslims had to be buried right over there they had to buy individual plots and so after that uh, in 1991 in the 90s sometime I think um, they got together and they kind of said that they wanted to have a place for the Muslims specifically now you can see all this green wall around here is marked it's just for the Muslims and it's interesting I'll just quickly read out a part of the book it says here that the burial of Muslims at the Westbury Cemetery precedes the arrival of the first Muslims from West Bengal in 1910 so there were Muslims there were Muslims here before this. It's interesting, from this book you'll find the Bengal to Barbados is that it's recorded that as early as 23rd May 1879, Rahim, a Muslim seaman from Calcutta, was buried here in this cemetery, a Westbury cemetery. And in fact, the first person to be buried here was an East Indian Muslim, Abdul Ghaffar Mendel, an itinerant trader who lived in Milk Market, Bridgetown, which we visited earlier on, he was buried at the Westbury Cemetery on the 11th of November, 1933. So may Allah have mercy upon all their souls here. Assalamu alaikum ahl al-diyar min al-mu'mineen wa insha'Allah bikum lahiqoon nas'alullah lana wa lakum al-afiyah. SubhanAllah is amazing. It might not look like a lot in number, but a lot of the Muslims are actually buried further down uh, south I think it is from here so this is a great place to end the video I hope you guys have enjoyed this tour um, I hope you guys now have an appreciation of the Islamic history here in Barbados it is immense here and one of the reasons why Muslims should make it a point to travel to this amazing and beautiful island I hope you guys have enjoyed the video please be sure to like subscribe and also share this video with other people if you found value in it it's been an amazing experience here in Barbados, especially exploring the Islamic history here. I highly recommend buying this book if you're interested in the history of Islam here in Barbados. Anyways, that's all for now. Hope to see you guys in another video. Take care. I'll see you guys soon. Assalamu alaikum.